Few things are more mysterious than that which resides within a land of myth and magic, and none more so than those shrouded in enigma at Hogwarts School of Witchcraft and Wizardry. Today we're going to be taking a look at 10 things, hidden things, that are tucked away in Hogwarts Legacy, and what they might mean for the students of the infamous School of Witchcraft and Wizardry. By the way, guys, this game is launching next month. So to say I'm hyped is an understatement. First, field guide pages. One of the first things you'll find hidden throughout Hogwarts are the different field guide pages tucked away that you'll need to acquire using spells such as Revelio or Accio. These pages are supplements to the field guide that you, an incoming fifth year, will be granted by the Ministry of Magic for your studies at Hogwarts. Now, while we're currently unsure of what you receive for having completed collecting all of the field pages, there is a section of the challenges menu where you can track how many you have collected thus far. Some of these pages may or may not be obtainable during the day and night cycles, so you might have to actually sneak around Hogwarts in the evening time to find that elusive field guide page. Now, a second hidden thing, or actually, of course, hidden passageways. Guys, we can't talk about Hogwarts without talking about the plethora of hidden passageways that line the inside of this magical castle. These passageways were featured a number of times, showing different routes in and out of the castle, to other areas within, and even to hidden chests with rewards for the players. It's also been hinted that some of these passageways will involve varying degrees of puzzles, which we can only hope will lead to some more fantastic rewards. I myself wonder if we'll actually be able to utilize some of the hidden passageways to make our way from Hogwarts to Hogsmeade. Considering that was possible in the Harry Potter series, I'm sure we'll be able to do that and much, much more. Maybe some hidden passageways bringing us to some of those other hamlets. Maybe we can even have our own version of the Marauder's Map. Now, third, common rooms. Now, in addition to the hidden passageways, we will have four house common rooms hidden away amongst the winding layout of Hogwarts. Now, Gryffindor Tower is hidden behind the fat lady portrait, accessible to only those that present the correct password. Hufflepuff common room only opens to those that present the appropriate number of knocks at the door leaning into a specific barrel and failing the knock correctly would find you drenched in putrid vinegar. The Slytherin common room is quite literally magically hidden until a large snake figure curls up from the floor and reveals it, hidden in plain sight. And of course, Ravenclaw. Well, not really that hidden, but still. Ravenclaw. This common room sits atop a spiral staircase, emitting those that answers a riddle correctly. Now, I know what you're thinking. Prophecies aren't really hidden in Hogwarts Legacy, but stick with me. What if we actually can sneak into the other houses. Every house has some kind of password that allows a person inside and combine that with all the various hidden passageways found in Hogwarts that we never got to see on something like the Marauder's Map. You see where I'm going with this? I think we'll be able to make our way into other house common rooms, whether it's by entering as a guest of one of our companions or even by sneaking in ourselves. Number four, golden chests. Something that could have been easily missed when watching the showcase or trailers was the large golden chest located within each of the common rooms. This chest looks as if it opens with some sort of key. And if I had to guess, we're probably looking at some sort of common storage feature. Some games put these chests in as a place to claim rewards or items earned out of game. But considering the devs went out of their way to show us the Hogwarts Allery, I think it's more than likely we'll have stuff like that delivered via the menus and an owl bombards you with your new broom or something. No, I think this golden chest will actually be shared storage between the common rooms. So consider it like a hub for characters and will most likely share with the room of requirements. So instead of like trekking all the way to the room of requirements every single time. Maybe you're in the common room. You can throw some items in there. Bada bing. It pops up in the storage over there. Number five, pets. What is Hogwarts without pets? We also received a look inside the dormitories and an owl sitting at the end of the player's bed with their stuff. This is fantastic. And it's a majestic creature. But later on, during the post-show trailer, we get a second look at the same spot in the Hufflepuff dorms and lo and behold, a completely different owl. Now, this doesn't straight up confirm that pets will be in the game. But if we look at the requirements for any new students to Hogwarts, students could could actually bring with them an owl, cat, or a toad. I think the implication is pretty clear here, since even though we're a fifth year, our character will be attending Hogwarts for the first time. Granted, only time will tell on this one, but I certainly hope we get a chance. Number six, flu fast travel. Now, the last thing we want to mention that are located in each of the common rooms, spread throughout the castle, and also dot the Scottish Highlands, are the flu powder fast travel points. These points are located, as mentioned, within each of the different common rooms. Whether or not that means we'll be able to unlock the travel points in the common rooms, outside of whatever our common room will be based on the house that we're actually designated to, that still remains a mystery. But you can definitely find a ton of these spread out amongst your various classrooms and the world beyond. So if you ever need to attend Defense Against the Dark Arts, but don't want to run or fly 10 kilometers, then you can just pop right in at the doorway. Or don't. That's the beauty of Hogwarts Legacy. Number seven, Merlin's puzzles and riddles. As we explore out into the massive open world of Hogwarts Legacy, we'll have the opportunity to uncover and explore riddles and mysteries left behind by the infamous Merlin. That's right, the Merlin. These puzzles appear all 
all throughout the world. And while we haven't yet had to look to see what exactly they entail, we know a few details about Merlin himself that let us speculate a little bit here. Firstly, Merlin was considered a druid in most Arthurian mythology and connected to nature and the earth. This is heavily reflected in the designs of his markers when activated, almost like stone druidic gazebos. Merlin also studied the ancient magic of the world extensively, particularly in and around Hogwarts during his time at the school. And when you put that together with our character's abilities to tap into ancient and forgotten magic, things start to get spicy. Number eight, necromancy. This is one form of magic that is absolutely taboo in the wizarding world and was said by Dumbledore to never have truly worked. And while technically true, necromancy never truly brought someone back to life, but rather raised a husk of what was formerly a living being, creating infery. Now we see numerous undead surrounding and attacking the students in the various gameplay showcase and trailers. And we're 99% sure that as students of Hogwarts, we would not be able to participate in this kind of magic, but it is important to note that it is present in the game. And considering this is supposed to be an RPG where we can explore the darkest of arts, maybe just maybe we too can dabble in necromancy. Number nine, the three broomsticks. Ah, yes, a classic. We've actually seen a little bit of gameplay surrounding Hogsmeade and everyone's been wondering what you'll be able to find within its borders. We know about Zonko's and the Hog's Head. There's the Quidditch Sporting Supplies Store, the clothing, potion, and material shops, and we'll be able to experience one of the favorite respites of the Golden Trio, the three broomsticks, years before their arrival. This, of course, was the hot spot for none other than Butterbeer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then finally, at number 10, possibly an Easter egg, Humphrey Weasley. Now, we finally got to see an in-depth look at the combat systems in Hogwarts Legacy during the first gameplay showcase where the character joined a dueling clock in the iconic Hogwarts clock tower. However, in the background of the behind the scenes video by Expecto Go, you can see combat in the dueling club with a specially named NPC, Humphrey Weasley. Believe me, guys, this blew our minds. We know that Weasleys have been attending Hogwarts for generations, and this NPC was donned in Gryffindor robes as well. But after a quick dive through the Weasley family line, this is actually the first we've ever seen of good old Humphrey. Will he be just a background Easter egg NPC, or will we actually be able to interact with this young wizard in some capacity? Either way it goes, guys, these are the 10 things hidden at Hogwarts Legacy that we're all very much excited to explore with you. Again, the game launches next month. Someone asked me the other day, Cross, are you getting paid for this? Is this some sort of promotional material? No, it's not. We're not getting paid for any of this. We're just hyped, okay? Look, man, I've been wanting to be a wizard my whole life. If we miss anything, though, feel free to comment it down below. Again, we're going to be diving into this game, exploring every bit of Hogwarts when it launches. Fellas and ladies, thank you all for coming and watching. And as always, slap that like button like your mama told you right.